as president, I guess I get to fill in. Lucky me. Um, and since Pastor's been doing a joke, I wanted to continue with that theme for Lent. So I do have a joke for everybody. Why are oak trees so forgiving? Because every March they turn over a new leaf. <laughs> okay, we're going to do announcements. Um, March 19th, uh, we're having a scavenger hunt and bonfire. Um, Keith and Sherry are sponsoring that if you want to sign up so this way they know how many people are coming. Um, any other announcements besides that? Okay. Um, not sure if we're supposed to stand, but I'm thinking, let's stand. <laughs> Who would have believed what we now report? Who could have seen the Lord's hand in this? It was the will of the Lord that his servant told He has no dignity or beauty to make us take notice of him. There was nothing attractive about him, nothing that would draw us to him. We despised him and rejected him. He endured suffering and pain. No one would even look at him. We ignored him as if he were nothing. When Christian love and care break forth, God's love breaks through. The Spirit of the Lord God is sent to bring good news to the oppressed and to bind up the broken. In Jesus Christ, God's love breaks through. reading tonight is found in the book of Luke chapter 10. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. 
She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Our second reading for tonight is found in the book of John, chapter 11. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not come yet to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. This ends the reading. Tonight's the first night of our series of Women of, of the Passion. So as I read my part today, I'm Mary, the listener. Mary is writing a letter, and her letter is being addressed to Philippa. You know, Martha and I have met this most unusual man. His name is Jesus, and he comes from Nazareth. He and Lazarus get along really well, too. We've had some enjoyable visits. Jesus is really an amazing man. Some call him the teacher here in Bethany. He is so wise and seems to have a strange power. He talks a lot about what it means to worship God. He says that the right kind of worship includes showing kindness and love to a neighbor. You know, many people have problems with that, being kind to a neighbor. They wonder how that shows our worship to God. But you know, I think Jesus might be right. He also talks about God as if he knows him, as if God has sent him. And some people say that Jesus has done remarkable things. He argues with the synagogue leaders and they get quite upset with him because they don't have the answers to what he says. Some say the synagogue leaders are thoroughly disgusted with him. And you know, they can get pretty nasty at times. In a way, I fear for Jesus. He's such a gentle person, and yet, at the same time, he raises hostile feelings in people. They must feel threatened by him. Jesus has quite a following. He has several men who travel with him. They help him as he teaches the crowds which gather wherever he goes. And these men run errands for him too. The people just marvel at his words. He teaches that the poor and the oppressed, the downtrodden and the sick will all know better times. In fact, he says that they're blessed. This is hard to understand, and yet when he says it, it seems true. It almost becomes easy to believe. Jesus also talks about love. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful, he says. And about not judging. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. This man from Nazareth is really something else. Some even say he can heal people. There are rumors that he has made the sick well in Capernaum, 
A centurion slave is said to have been healed. A Roman, no less. And then there's Mary, called Magdalene. Jesus cast demons out of her. And Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, and Susanna were cleansed of evil spirits. Jesus is really somebody special. I don't understand what he does or how he does it. And sometimes the things he says are so new, so different, and he seems so full of love. The Romans fear him because our people talk so much about him. The synagogue leaders are frightened because Jesus contradicts what they say. I'm really afraid of what might happen to him. And you know, Philippa, Jesus has come to visit us here in Bethany. I got in trouble with Martha because the last time he was here, I just sat and listened to him. He wanted me to stay and listen to his words. Martha got angry because I wasn't helping her with what the serving. She even asked Jesus why he didn't tell me to help her. You know what Jesus said? Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things. And Mary has chosen the good portion, which shall not be taken from her. He actually said it was okay for me to listen, to learn from him. He said I was doing a good thing, and that made me feel so good. So often, men never talk to us, as if all we can do is fix the meals and take care of the children. But Jesus said, I can listen, and I can learn, too. Jesus told me so many things that night. He told me about the way he sees the kingdom of God and about how we should be with people around us. He said we should love the Lord with all our heart and soul and strength and mind and also our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus talked about the Father who sent him. Philippa, this man is special. He says things. He does things that are truly of God. This man, Jesus, is of God. And I fear for Jesus' life. Maybe he is the promised one. Jesus, I'll call him of God, son of God. And I'm afraid he's going to die. in prayer and in deed, the sick 
and the sorrowing, the desperate and the dying, and all who need to be strengthened in their pilgrimage. Lord, hear our prayer. Your will be done. O loving God, grant us the power to pray for peace in the world and to strive for it in our own endeavors. Lord, hear our prayer. Your will be done. O loving God, grant us the power to trust that Christ's redemptive work will bring us with those we love through even death at last and into your glorious presence. Lord, hear our prayer. Your will be done. Through him who came to be the power of God and the wisdom of God, Christ crucified your Son, our Lord. Amen. Now we'll say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, hallowed be your name.